It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there. But with all the current uncertainty, how do we know when and where to put our hard-earned money to work for us? It's easy to become distracted by that shiny object or the quote-unquote next best thing. So how do we determine which strategies will best align with our financial goals? Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies to build our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Danny Nichols. And I'm Chris Thompson. This is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. This is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. I am your host, Danny Nichols, and this week we're joined by Jens Nielsen. But before we jump into today's episode, one quick thing. If you're a fan of the show or even a first-time listener, we would really appreciate you leaving us a rating and written review. It really helps us attract more guests, grow the podcast, and ultimately provide better information for everyone listening. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's jump into today's show. What's going on, everybody? Today's guest is Jens Nielsen. Jens immigrated from Denmark in 1996 and after a successful career in IT and then followed his passion for real estate and coaching. Jens is now a full-time real estate investor and direct owner or general partner in over 1,100 apartment units around the country. He's also a certified high-performance coach and has coached over 50 clients to higher levels of success in their business and personal lives through strategy, accountability, and personal growth. Jens, it's great to see you. Welcome to the show. Oh, likewise, Danny. I'm really excited about our call today. Absolutely. You know, we've been excited about this for quite a while um, to get you on the show. But before we dive into today's uh, topics, let's take some time to share your story with investors. Tell us a bit about more about your background and how you got into real estate. Yeah, I mean, so people may detect a little bit of an accent. And as you in my in, in the intro, you said, you know, I came from Denmark. I've been here. I've literally been in the U.S. for half of my life now. I just turned 50 this year. So for the last 25 yeah. years, it sounds like a <laughs> a long time, but that's that's where I'm at. So 25 years in the U.S., had a great career in IT, you know, did what you're supposed to, get an education, get a job, paying you 401k. And I thought that was what you're supposed to do. And I did it for so long, right? And then one day I was like, man, I had, a, you know, in my mid-40s, I realized I have to do this another 20 years if I'm ever going to have a chance of retiring. And I was like, I don't want that. And I discovered real estate. I didn't know anything about real estate investing five years ago. I was like a total beginner, started out, started connecting with people. When I, when, I, when I decided real estate investing was the path, I started finding out who was doing it in my network, started connecting with some people and started, you know, just buying from small deals for myself because I felt like I, I didn't really know what I was doing. So let me put my own capital at risk, bought some small deals. And so I live in New Mexico and I was buying them down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, you know, some couple of fourplexes, moved up to an 11 unit. And then after the first few smaller deals, uh, we did a joint venture, a 38 unit. And then I was like, man, now I'm out of money. What do I do next? And then I was lucky to get connected with some people that were actually syndicating deals, you know, taking larger uh, apartment complexes and getting passive investors into that. And I kind of saw the path forward. It's like, wow, this is amazing. We can get people to invest in real estate. We can help them do that. And we use other people's money to do the deals. That way there's like no limit to how many deals we can do. So that's the path I started or moved towards, you know, and, and just in the last three years, as you mentioned, we've done over 1,100 units. I think we, you know, me and some of my partners really have six deals on the contract right now that we're working on. So it's just wow. a crazy amount of <laughs> stuff that's happening right now. So, so yeah, it's been a crazy and amazing journey for sure. You know, and I kind of want to, you know, you said some pretty, pretty awesome stuff in there. I kind of want to dive into it. But just uh, before you know that, congratulations. I mean, seriously, uh, moving that fast and getting that many, you know, units and stuff under your belt in, you know, three to five years. That's a, that's amazing. So cr- congratulations on that. Um, so I do want to talk about your kind of transition from, you know, you mentioned, you know, working the normal job, nine to five, four hundred one k, and then you kind of moved into uh, now like an entrepreneurial role, being a real estate investor. And, you know, I think, most of us were raised to think that the best way to be successful successful was to go to school, you know, get a good job and stuff like that. It's the, the normal route we're taught, right? So making that transition from employee to entrepreneur, uh, it can be a big step. And I know it takes a real mindset shift to overcome some of the internal objections that come with making that leap, right? I mean, it's just, it's just difficult, right? Uncomfortable, really. So when you were considering going the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial route, did you have any type of mindset recalibration that took place? If so... What was that process like for you? 
Yeah. So, you know, initially the plan was just, oh, I'll do this for 10 years and I'll slowly accumulate, you know, my own portfolio and I'll do it on the side while I continue to work and so forth. Right. That was the initial plan five years ago. But then I also realized, like, man, that's a long term plan. I don't want to move that slowly. Um, and then I had a, you know, I, I but I still wasn't fully committed to that moving quicker. And then I actually I had a um, I had a pretty abrupt a, you know, kind of wake up call about a little over about three, sorry, two and a half years ago when I had a, I've been a bicyclist my whole life and I had a pretty bad crash on my mountain bike and I ended up in the hospital with a, a crash, a, a crushed kidney and some wow. crashes in my vertebrae and other things. And I was kind of lying in that hospital bed there. I was like, man, I'm 47 years old. What am I doing? Right. I was just pursuing the wrong thing, putting my energy in the wrong places. And that time I, I made that decision. It's like, no, I cannot be fooling around anymore. It's time to take some serious action there. So there was definitely a dramatic shift there. And then the next thing I kind of did too, I was like, well, I need some professional help in a sense. I need some coaching. I need some somebody to help me change my mindset to start seeing that, that path forward. And then I started working with, you know, it took a little while before I actually started taking the action with the coach, but once I started working with my coach, he, you know, we, we we came up with a plan that I could actually commit to, and I would start seeing how this is going to work. And luckily, I had a boss that was understanding, so it was a little bit of a transitioning out of my job. It's helped a lot, lot as well. So, but yeah, definitely the mindset and seeing hey, this is possible that you can actually go and do that was so, so helpful to me. Yeah, and I think that's amazing. And you bring up something that's very interesting, and we hear this from from other investors, successful investors like yourself, right? Is that you know you went out and you found a mentor, and we find that that's in a lot of people's story that's that's very important, right? And so the one thing that I have found with with new investors who hear this, and you know they're out trying to find a mentor, like hey, you know I need to find a mentor, I need to take that next step. What what did you do to kind of align your interest, or what did you do to make sure you found the coach that was right for you? Yeah, so initially I started with kind of those one of those mentorship programs when you're in a group and you learn from that. This is excellent, especially when we were going to events because I connected with people at those events, right? Yeah, you learn the the technical stuff of real estate investing. Everybody can figure that out, I think. But the actual connecting with the people, to seeing people that were ahead of you that were doing stuff, that was such a big deal. But still, I was I was missing the one on one, right? So luckily, I got connected to somebody who already had the experience working with with real estate investors. I mean, we were already, you know, quote unquote high performers. You know, getting stuff done is not the problem. It's getting the right stuff done and getting it done in a way that we take pleasure along the way, right? So he is very good at that, right? So not only connecting me with my future vision of what my life was going to be, but also making sure I didn't forget everything that was important along the way, you know, my family and friendships and, you know, just being, you know, living in the level of, in the life of abundance too. So that, that really helped a lot uh, having that right person to connect with me. Absolutely. And I find that, you know, you said something really great there is, you know, you can get stuff done, but it's more important to get the right stuff done. You know, you could be, you could sit out there and you could be busy all day. Well, busy isn't productive. What you want to be is productive, right? And then also uh, one of the most important things that I've found uh, since I started in real estate investing, and like you said, is it's so important to have that clarity, right? Because if you don't have an idea or a plan of where you're going or what you want to do, you really, you're going to run into some roadblocks. So I, I love that you said that, that that's great. And so I do want to ask, what advice would you tell someone who's considering making a similar transition from, you know, of, you know, W2 employee to taking on entrepreneurial, maybe they're on the fence or maybe they're having issues changing their way of thinking. Do you have any advice for somebody who's in that position? I always want people to examine their reasons for, for moving towards real estate, you know, and there's really like three levels of whys that um, we, we typically run into. Number one is like, we want to get rid of the pain pain being a job we don't like or you know, a situation we're in we don't like. So that's usually the first driver, but that doesn't get you very far because we can always quit and get a different job. The second one is like stuff. People want stuff, which could be time as well. It could be free time. It could be money. It could be material things, whatever. That's a good driver too, but again, it only gets you so far. And then the third driver is really how do you give back or how do you grow and what's the really the bigger vision of you, right? So of your future. So really... People need to connect with their vision for that future they want to have, right? Is it 
Is it travel? Is it giving back? Is it growing an amazing team? Is it doing whatever it is? That, that thing that really, really excites you. Create that clear vision around that because that's what's going to drive you. You may not know how to get there, but once you know what you want, your, your, your desire to work towards it every day is going to be much, much stronger. I love it. Those are great tips. I, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people will be able to take away some good stuff from that. So thank you for sharing. Um, all right, Jens. So moving along your journey here, you decided real estate was what you were going to pursue. And, you know, you adjusted your mind, your mindset from being an employee to being an entrepreneur. And then you went and educated yourself on the specific, on your specific investing interests. What were the next steps you took to move forward and get that first investment? Yeah, so you know, the, the first couple of smaller deals I just kind of bought by myself. But I want to talk maybe about my first like larger syndications. Perfect. That, yeah. You know, so so that, that step I realized like, wait, I can't do that by myself, right? I mean, I could I could buy a fourplex by myself, but I can't go and do 200 units by myself. So I realized the value of a team. And I realized that early on I didn't quite understand what people meant by a team. Because, you know, we were always taught in school and other places, oh, you got to be, you know, individually successful and all this. But I really learned in the real estate world, there's no such thing as, you know, I want my own island there. So I started really finding people that were, you know, a step or two ahead of me in my view of, of what they were doing. Maybe they had their first deal. Maybe they were out there syndicating or whatever. I was like, man, I would just connect with them and said, hey, so-and-so, how can I... What can I do to help you? What can I do to add some value? And it's it's a hard question. I don't like when people ask me that. So I said, because then it becomes my problem to figure right. out how to help them. Right. <laughs> so what I actually did, I said, hey, you know, we met at this event. I like you guys. Why don't we meet on a monthly basis on a little mastermind, a little Zoom session, right? So I added some value to them. But they all said, well, if you get this guy and that guy, I want to be part of it, right? So, so I brought some quote unquote high performers or you know, people taking action together. And then suddenly it was worthwhile for them to kind of show up. And that started creating like, you know, when that first deal opportunity came up, it was one of those people that I had had calls with for several months, right? So he saw the value of me. He started to see what kind of qualities I had and he brought me in on the deal, right? And another guy is like my really good friend now. And so this has created a, some synergy there that has really helped us to help me start out. So I think that's a, an advice to give to anybody, right? Put a group together of people you want to be like, you want to hang out with, add some value to them that way. They'll probably pull you forward. I love that. You know, that's, that's, that's a great tip, you know, be able to bring value to a group of people and then go from there, right? That's a good starting point. So I do want to talk about that as well. You know, when you were, when you were growing your team, when you were creating your team, did you guys have defined roles? Were you guys like, oh, Jens does this, your other partner does this and this, or was it kind of like everybody wears all hats kind of thing at the beginning? You know, until we, you know, that's always a challenge, you know, figuring out what people are good at, right? right. I mean, and it took a little while to get there. So now I have, you know, I've actually created a different team since then. And I have one partner that we've done, you know, five or six deals with. So him and I, you know, I like the guy, but he's very different than me. I'm the detail oriented. Let's, let me, drive stuff for me, the project manager. And he's the guy's like going out there and finding deals and looking at the bigger picture and everything else. So it's a great connection because, you know, he'll dream big and I'll say, like, okay, awesome. How are we going to get it done? Right. So that helps. Plus we have some other team members too, but you know, so, so I think early on, well, I know what my strengths are. So I knew where I can help. Right. Some of the other people may, may were actually learning along the way too right and you got to be very careful about don't get five introverts together trying to do a deal because everybody wants to sit and look at the spreadsheets all day right absolutely so. absolutely you're absolutely right there i know in the past i've had issues you know partner with people and it's one of those things you want to partner with them because maybe you're friends or you've known each other for a long time but you, you have the same skill set right and then you're going to run into problems down the road so i think it's like you said, it's very important to have comp complementary skills, right? So you guys can match up as a team. So I do want to take that a step further. You know, you're talking about, we talked about the that first syndication. Can you talk about that deal specifically? What would that like? What was that like? What did that um what did that encompass? And then did you guys run into any issues? Did you learn any good lessons from that first syndication? Yes, this one was a 212 unit deal in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or a suburb of Atlanta. Uh, you know, class C, C plus, you know, typical value add. Um I think, you know, the lessons learned there, you know, whereas we were, you know, I got a good year into it, 
we, uh, you know, COVID hit and everything else. Mm. And, you know, we started to struggle. And for some reason, that property had a lot of delinquencies, um, you know, due to the tenant class or whatever. So we definitely struggled for a while there with, with um, being able to pay distributions and so forth. And then, so um, since then, that has started to clear up and we're, you know, kind of moving forward. I will say, you know, my involvement in that was not, you know, it's a small a small piece of the, you know, help bring some equity, help doing some underwriting and some few things like that. So the day-to-day on, on you know, going on is, is, is not super, super clear to me, but I, the, the great thing is we just got it on the contract to sell probably in the next few months after two and a half years. And I think we're going to probably double our investors money. Right? Wow. So it's gone well. And, you know, in the end, but, you know, some struggles along the way with, with COVID, yeah. for sure. I think that happens, and that's happened a lot with many people across the country, right, especially during the last 12 to 18 months. I think that's that's pretty common, you know, running into struggles, but it sounds like you guys have handled it very well. Um, that That's pretty amazing. Love the lessons learned there. Um, I want to talk about, you know, you know, we talked about a team before, and one thing I also find that with a lot of investors like yourself, that uh, they find that systems are very important to the success of investments. Um, can you speak anything on um, systems and your experience with systems and have you implemented them in your investment strategy? Yeah, so we have kind of, we call it our syndication checklist, right? That's kind of the list of all the key tasks to to do in a deal, right? So once we get a new deal, we'll make a copy of it and we'll put it in either into, you know, uh, Asana or Trello or one of those kind of task management systems there. So we at least have, you know, the task built built out. And then we kind of, you know, we start assigning names to it, you know, who should do what. So that's a key thing. We use, you know, Slack for our communication, you know, and, and so forth, right? But, you know, it's really one of the realizations that come, it's really like any other project you do, right? So if you have an IT career or any kind of something that involves projects, just how did you do projects in the past? How do you were successful there? Well, just do the same stuff on the real estate. It's just different stuff, but it's still getting tasks completed at a certain time in a certain order. And that's how you get to the finish line. Love it. I love it. I think team systems are some of the most important things to uh, running a successful business. So I'd love to hear that. So, you know, we've kind of come out of this COVID thing. Obviously, it's still kind of going on. Um, what do you have? What are you focusing on now um, going forward? And then uh, how do you see multifamily um, progressing as we move, say, six months to 12 months? Yeah, I mean, you know, I I do my coaching stuff and we can maybe talk. To, so that's one one aspect of my business is, is coaching people. But then from the real estate um, investment standpoint, I'm doing a lot of partnerships right, right now. I'm partnering with some of my clients to help them get their first deal. So that I, I'm working on and they're kind of all over the country. So that's super exciting. Personally, the stuff that I do and my partner is kind of the upper Midwest. We focus on the Cleveland, Ohio kind of area because we are with we local presence there and we've been able to find deals that make sense for us. So that's what we're doing. And I think right now we're working on a 187 unit deal plus a 72 unit deal that's in that market that we're currently on the contract to do and uh, just working through the process. We ran into an environmental. So you do a phase one environmental inspection or survey, what do you call it, like a inquiry. And we found out there had been a gas station and a, a dry cleaner close to one of our properties. And now we got to go to phase two to figure out, make sure there isn't any contamination there. Which right. Is, uh, delay our closing and other things. So that's always fun when you're in just like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you got a lot going on there, Jens. Love to hear that. You got a bright future. Love to hear that. So you mentioned coaching and, uh, you know, you've been very successful over, you know, you've started, you know, um, when you made that transition, you've been very successful since then. So I want to talk about that transition into coaching. What kind of drew you into becoming a coach? And can you talk more about that? Yeah, I mean, really, when I saw the impact it had on my life, when I started working with a coach, like, oh, my God, this is this is amazing. How can I help other people like this? Right? I just really loved it because it was it's a little bit like problem solving, but that's something I love to do. Right? You have somebody has some limiting beliefs or blocks or anything like that. And you try to help that person get beyond that. So that's always very satisfying. So after I'd worked with my coach for a while, I decided, let me go and get my own certification. So I got certified as a, as a high performance coach through the Brendan Bouchard's uh, program. And once I got a certification, I was just out there just coaching people and helping and, and, and mentoring. And 
I'm just seeing, you know, both people growing in their personal life and their business and their relationship with their families, uh, whatever it may be. So it's just a rewarding thing. I just, I love doing it. And uh, it's just a, it's just a key part of my life right now. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Brendan Burchard's as well. You know, the book, the journal, all that stuff. I think we talked about that before uh, before the show. That's uh, it's all great stuff. Love to hear that. But you also mentioned that you do a, a little bit of multifamily mentoring, not just high performance stuff, a little multi. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I started, I really started the multifamily mentoring, right? The, the, the training and the consulting. But so I also love to do that. But, you know, it becomes... It becomes a little bit repetitive too if you keep doing the same stuff. That's why I got drawn towards the multifamily. So I do mix that in, right? If somebody wants to, you know, any client I take on now, it's always either just a high performance or a combination of the two mm-hmm. because I really feel like, you know, people may come for the, for the real estate mentoring, but they really, what drives them forward is the high performance coaching part. I love it. I love it. I think I think everybody needs some sort of coaching or mentoring in their life, especially when they're getting into this. Because what I've noticed since getting into the real estate investing space is that you know it's so important to have that that extra person there to kind of show you when you know how to do it when you come in and all this stuff. So super important. Jens, you know this has been a great conversation. Really have enjoyed getting to learn more about you and your story. Before we get out of here, we want to take some time and shine the spotlight on you. So tell us just more about your syndication company, your coaching, or anything else you have going on. Absolutely. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. So. People can go to my website. That's Open Doors with an S, opendoorscapital.com. I don't really have a coaching site, a website for that, but there's a mentoring tab on there. People can click on if they want to connect me with that. If people are interested in, you know, we have several passive investment opportunities coming up. If people want to, to uh, get on my list, there's an, there's an invest button there. They can sign up for our portal. You know, I also love getting on calls with people. So anybody who wants to talk about coaching or syndication or anything like that, they can go to opendoorscapital.com slash call. You'll take me, take them to my calendar link and they can um, schedule a call there or send me an email at uh, jens at opendoorscapital.com. So that's Perfect. what I can yeah. offer. Perfect. I love it. We're going to make sure to include all that stuff in the show notes. So anybody who wants to reach out, they can do that and get a hold of you. Jens, like I said, it's been a great conversation. Thank you for coming on the show today. Absolutely, Danny. It was a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. Head over to iTunes to subscribe to the show. And while you're there, we really appreciate you leaving a rating and written review. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, connect with us on social media or through our website at twosmartassets.com. We look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.